हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस लेक्चर वील स्टडी सम डेफिनेशन रिलेटेड टू वेव फंक्शन लाइक इनर प्रोडक्ट ऑफ टू वेव फंक्शन स्क्वायर इंटीग्रेबल फंक्शन नॉर्म ऑफ ए वेव फंक्शन द नॉर्मलाइजेशन कंडीशन ऑर्थोगोनल स्टेट्स एंड ऑर्थोगोनल कंडीशन एंड ऑर्थोनॉर्मल स्टेट्स एंड ऑर्थोनॉर्मल कंडीशन सो लेटेस्ट स्टडी वन बाय वन फर्स्ट द इनर प्रोडक्ट ऑफ टू वेव फंक्शन इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वाइल स्टडिंग द डेफिनेशन ऑफ हिलबर्ट स्पेस देर वॉज ए पॉइंट दैट द हिलबर्ट स्पेस हैज अ डिफाइंड इनर प्रोडक्ट विच इज स्ट्रिक्टली पॉजिटिव सो टेकिंग द इनर प्रोडक्ट फ्रॉम देर लेट एस सी हाउ टू फाइंड द इनर प्रोडक्ट द स्टेट ऑफ ए सिस्टम इन क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स फ्रॉम द बेसिक लेक्चर्स वी आर सीन दैट द स्टेट ऑफ ए सिस्टम इन क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स इज डिनोटेड बाय वेव फंक्शन साई साई वन साई टू साई थ्री फाइव फाइव वन फाइव टू फाइव थ्री एंड ऑल ऑफ देम फॉर्म द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ द हिलवर्ट स्पेस सो लेट मी टेक टू वेव फंक्शन साई एंड फाइव द इनर प्रोडक्ट बिटवीन साई एंड फाइव इज डिफाइंड एज इंटीग्रल ओवर कंप्लीट रेंज of x if the wave function is a function of x then integral over complete range so whatever the first vector is there we take complex conjugate of that vector and the second vector is kept as it is so let us uh, think that psi and phi are functions of x so we take dx here so this is the way of calculate uh, finding the inner product of two wave functions so in terms of the dirac notation this can also be written as bra psi cat phi is equal to integration over the complete range the first vector is psi so here we write the complex conjugate of psi phi dx so this is the method of finding the inner product now there is a question that can all the wave functions or all the vectors of a space can be used to find the inner product that's the question so let us take uh, one example let us find the inner product between e to the power of x and e to the power of 2x and c so to find the inner product we have to take this one so complex conjugate of e to the power of x is e to the power of x itself because there is no imaginary part and you know how to take the complex conjugate just change the imaginary part sign of the imaginary part so it will be as it is so e to the power of 2x so if we do this integration so we get this as infinity but in the property of hilbert space we have seen that there should be a definite inner product but here we are getting the inner product as infinity this is not a definite inner product so these two uh, functions or these two vectors cannot be used to find the inner product so this is equal to infinity then the question is so what kind of uh, functions can be used to find the inner product the answer is the functions which are called as square integrable functions can be used to find the inner product next let us see the definition of square integrable function a square integrable function is uh, a function a function is said to be square integrable function if the inner product of psi with itself inner product of uh, psi with itself if you do this one then this will be minus infinity to plus infinity psi star the first vector psi star psi dx this can also be written as psi star psi so this will be absolute value of psi square dx is finite or this is less than infinity if it is less than infinity we say that it converges or it we say that it's a finite so this is a square integrable function a function whose inner product with itself is less than infinity or it's a finite is called as 
square integrable function. So only the square integrable functions can be used to find the inner product because if you take the square integrable functions then this uh, uh, integration will be finite and if you take another square integrable function then that integration will also be finite and when we find the inner product of these two functions then the inner product will be finite. So remember only square integrable functions are used to find the inner product and whatever the functions we saw in the Hilbert space psi, phi all those are the square integrable functions. So the elements or the vectors which are present in the Hilbert space are all the square integrable functions. Next let us see the norm of a function. Norm is defined as norm is equal to its square root of inner product of the function with itself. So in the direct notation it can be written like this and this is the method to evaluate the norm. Either psi star psi you integrate it or absolute uh, square of absolute value of the function. So this is the norm of a function. So actually norm gives the magnitude of the function. So let me give an example. Suppose we have a vector a given as uh, 2i plus uh, 3j plus 4k. So this is a vector. Now if you want to find the magnitude of this one we find it like this root of 2 square 3 square 4 square so this can also be written as 2 dot 2 uh, 2 into 2 3 into 3 4 into 4 and this is nothing but if you see here 2 into 2 this is uh, like uh, a dot a the components are multiplied and this square root I write it like this so there is a comparison between this and this one right this is the inner product of psi this is the dot product of the vector and take the root then we get the magnitude of the vector so that is the definition of norm of a function next one is suppose when we find the norm of the function suppose if the norm of the function comes out to be 1 if the norm of the function is equal to 1 then that kind of function is called as normalized wave function so what is a normalized wave function? The norm of wave function is 1 then it is called normalized wave function and this condition that uh, inner product of psi in terms of uh, direct notation, in terms of integral uh, notation, in terms of the probable bond interpretation if you write uh, these are the different ways of writing the inner product if it turns out to be 1 then that function is called as normalized wave function and this condition is called as normalization condition. Now let us see the orthogonal states. If the inner product of two vectors is zero, so when we take the inner product, if the inner product comes out to be zero, then those two vectors are called as orthogonal states and this condition is called as orthogonality condition. If the inner product is equal to 0, similarly we have in the case of vectors, if the dot product of uh, two vectors is 0, then we say that uh, it is uh, uh, both the vectors are orthogonal. Next one is orthonormal states. Suppose we have states psi1, psi2, psi3 such that the norm of each of them is unity. That is psi1, psi2, psi3 are normalized and they are also such that psi1, psi2 are orthogonal to each other. That means if you take uh, inner product of psi1 with psi2, we get 0. If you take inner product of psi1 and psi3, the answer will be 0. Or if you take the inner product of psi, uh, sorry, sorry, this one is phi. Okay, it's not psi, this is phi. You can take anything, okay. Either you take psi1, psi, uh, anything phi, phi1, but here I have written phi. So, if the functions phi1, phi2, phi3 are such that norm of each of them is unity, that is the functions phi1, phi2, phi3 are normalized and uh, one more condition is they are orthogonal to each other. That is, if you take the inner product of uh, phi1 and phi2 or phi1 and phi3 or phi2 and phi3, we get 0. So, two conditions. These vectors are normalized and they are 
orthogonal to each other then that condition can be written in terms of Kronecker delta that is phi i inner product of phi i phi j is equal to del i j del i j is equal to 1 if i is equal to j that is if i take uh, phi 1 and phi 1 then it will be 1 so that means i am taking the normalization condition if i uh, then the next is del i j is equal to 0 if i is equal to uh, sorry this is not 0 if i is equal to j so del i j is equal to 0 if i is, I is not equal to j, uh, j. then that means uh, i am taking uh, phi 1 and phi 2 then it will be 0 because that is the orthogonal condition so if these two conditions are satisfied then this uh, condition is called orthonormal condition this condition is called orthonormal condition and the states are called as orthonormal states so this is the end of this lecture so in this lecture we have seen some definitions related to the wave function in the next lecture we will see operators the properties of operators the definition and properties of operators